Hello again, Oregon Trail Association. It is Matt, the executive director, here with another update. Uh, today I have quite a bit of items. I got 12 items on my list, but most of these are just kind of informational, showing you some resources that are available on the website that have been items that have been requested for a while. We've officially finished our full website renovation now, so I'm uh, excited that everything is up and running uh, and fully functional at the moment. So first and foremost though, I want to make sure I highlight the winter last mile uh, deadline. So this Friday, the 18th, is the deadline to submit student applications for the winter last mile and get scholarship funds going into winter term. So make sure you have completing those checklists for those students and you're helping students complete that process so they can be considered for funding going into this, this next window. Additionally, we recorded a Q&A for the last mile, uh, including myself and two members of that review committee, uh, Destiny Hunt and Linda Liu, who are giving some background and context for kind of what the behind the scenes process looks like, as well as some tips and tricks for your applications to make you more successful as a student applying for those funds. So definitely worth, worth checking out. And you can find that call on our website under the last mile tab under scholarships. So uh, feel free to go over there and review that call to best equip your students to be successful. Next, we have the OTA Fellowship. So this is that board role. Uh, they are a voting member of the OTA board, serve with us throughout all of 2023. And this individual also gets a paid trip to Washington, D.C., gets to come to our professional development conference uh, and just kind of is involved in the organization. Uh, this year, we're requesting, we try to encourage um, some participation from this individual. So we like for them to bring some kind of project or pet idea or some tasks that they would love to maybe see done or accomplished. So you'll notice in the application process this year, we're kind of asking that question up front. Uh, it's very flexible in terms of what that can be, but we just want to see what kind of impact would an alumni or a current trip professional who's an alumni uh, want to bring as far as doing something to impact students, impact other alumni. Uh, so that is part of the application process that is due at the end of this month. If you have any questions at all about that process, please feel free to reach out to me and I can provide some more context uh, and elaborate on exactly uh, what we're looking for with those applications. All right, next, uh, for the summer abroad for the high school students, the CIEE partnership, we recorded an informational call with CIEE and we had a student who got to go last year to South Africa. So if you wanna learn more about that process, uh, both from the student perspective or as an advisor, kind of what goes into that and what's required. I recommend you go to our website and check out the informational call that we have embedded under the scholarship and summer abroad section. While we are on the website, we'll be touching on a lot of things here. We have under the video, under membership, uh, videos and tutorials on a variety of items. The first I want to highlight is that we have a Canva video up there right now just showing you how to utilize the team features and some of the brand features that are built in to the OTA team uh, and Canva Pro membership that many of you have. So feel free to go onto our website and check out those recordings to kind of learn how to utilize that platform better. It's also sharing the designs that you are creating with your Canva Pro membership so that other members of the uh, OTA team can view all of those things and have some templates to design their own material. On a similar note, so that was created by Jordan J, who is uh, was our AmeriCorps Visto, who is helping with the social media. Uh, Jordan is now a contracted employee for us, still helping with our social media programming, uh, but he is also capable of helping provide tech support or social media support to each of you in your program. So if you are looking to have somebody look at your current setup and kind of give you an evaluation of your social media programming, or you need some help uh, kind of starting, you're at the ground level and you need to initiate that, uh, OTA is here and can help you uh, create those initial steps and Jordan is more than willing to uh, meet with you and, and provide that insight. So again, you can reach out to myself, I'll include in the email, uh, Jordan's email as well, so you can coordinate that uh, and get some assistance in getting your social media and, and your communications up to par. While we are talking website stuff, I went ahead and one of the, one of the challenges we often hear is that um, I, people are unaware of what even exists on our website and all the tools that are available and resources. So I created a video, it's a little longer, it's about nine minutes, but it's just like a website 101, right? Go through and kind of show you what currently is available on the website. So that tutorial can be a good way to just immerse yourself with all the resources and tools and, 
uh, that are available through the website now that we finished our renovation. And similarly, uh, one of the requests I got was to, instead of doing kind of onboarding calls to talk about some of the bigger trio structures like COE, our regional association, NAOP, or even OTA, like instead of just doing those in semi-annual Zoom calls and answering questions or providing you know, PowerPoint presentations, wouldn't it be great if there was just a video on the website that kind of highlighted those? So I've gone ahead and created trio onboarding videos for all three of those organizations, OTA, NAOP, and COE. So this could be really good for newer staff or folks that are newer to trio, just to kind of get acclimated with some of the larger structures that exist uh, in the trio world. So that can be, uh, again, just a useful resource for you and your staff uh, when you're trying to uh, inform them about the the trio spaces beyond just your own grant and institution. All right, uh, another thing I want to highlight on the website. So because we are now officially out of this election cycle, there are officially six districts now in Oregon in terms of our federal legislative districts. And the map has moved around quite a bit. So you will see on our website, I now have all the program locations listed out. All of the current grants are listed on here as well as mapped out by our current districts. So you'll see that we have three new members of the House of Representatives from Oregon. So there's gonna be a lot of new outreach and hopefully you'll have a chance to invite these new folks to visit your programs if you're in one of these uh, districts. Some of you have changed who your representatives are, you've just changed districts. So you can view all that information and kind of get a sense of where you are now located uh, by checking out our website. Next up, I have been talking about some of the blazer ticket availability. Uh, if that's something that you are interested in either with you and you as a trio staff member or you have some students who maybe be interested i will link in the email the the form where you can fill out an interest application basically i just collect email addresses and phone numbers so that way i can directly communicate with students and i don't need to work through all of you in the trio programs uh, i just want to provide some context so this process basically works at, at the start of every month i send out a survey to all those emails that said they're interested and students can select up to two games they're interested in attending for that given month uh, then when i'm contacted through the portland trailblazers if they have tickets available in each game i basically will request the maximum tickets allowed it appears to be about 50 this year uh, and then I disperse those tickets among students who requested to attend that particular game. I can let you know that I often get requests for like over 200 tickets per game. So in the, for the sake of just streamlining this process and being equitable, like I'm doing my best to distribute these uh, as broadly as possible. So some people aren't getting multiple opportunities while others are getting none. So uh, I will do my best to spread out the opportunities for our students, but know that I can't guarantee attendance with any specific uh, game, right? So I'm doing my best, this is a, an amazing opportunity. It's really can be an awesome experience for students who wouldn't normally be able to afford this. So I'll do my best to provide this through the year, uh, but just kind of be patient if you or your students are ones looking to attend games. Uh, I really can't guarantee more than probably one to two opportunities throughout the entire season, even though you would think with 30, 40 games, uh, you would have more opportunities, but a lot of people would love to take advantage of this opportunity. So I am doing my best, but uh, ticket scalping is not exactly my primary uh, job duty. So I'm doing it in ways that make sense and are as streamlined as possible for both myself uh, and workable for our students. Uh, keep in mind also that those tickets are usually not made available to me until about 48 to 72 hours before the game. So it can be difficult to give advance notice of uh, anybody getting to actually attend game that they requested tickets for. So I apologize. I wish I could do it with more advance notice, but really this is dependent on when those tickets are provided to me by the Portland Trailblazers. All right, one also tech related item I want to talk about here. I'll have information in the email how to join this channel, but we are going to create a Discord channel. I've heard from enough people that they would love to have just like a group chat, a space they could go that is related to Oregon Trail Association and just have conversations that is separate from their work email. It's not one of these reply to all situations on the listserv. Uh, so I've created a Discord channel. Uh, where you can join and just kind of have essentially just group chats on your phone. Now, this is something you can use a wind, like a web browser for and view it that way, but you can also download a Discord app. Uh, and Discord is remarkable because it allows you to just kind of get notifications or join groups that are of interest to you. So you'll notice in our Discord 
channel. I have things separated out by like job postings, individual programs, whether it's Talent Search, Upper Bound, SSS, uh, even one for directors. Like the idea is you kind of follow the conversations that are worth your interest. You can even set them up on your phone where you even get almost like text notifications on your phone for the, the subjects or the content areas that are important to you. But if we can get enough people in the space and using the space, it could be a really helpful way to just uh, brainstorm ideas and chat with other trio professionals within our own community that is not overwhelming uh, or does not add to kind of the work stuff that you're doing. So at the moment, there's not a lot of folks in it, but I'm hoping to slowly start moving some individuals there, especially younger folks or advisors who often find it difficult to connect with other trio professionals throughout the year. So I'll have more information coming on the Discord channel, but I'm going to put some basic instructions in there already if you want to join uh, and start utilizing that platform. All right, we are on item number 11. So you've seen some information, hopefully go out over the listserv. Uh, there are some groups that for National Trio Day, which is, I believe it's like Saturday, February 25th, uh, we are trying to plan like a statewide service day. So right now, uh, at least Clatsop Community College, and it sounds like some folks down in Southern Oregon are interested as well, out of Swak and possibly Umpqua. Uh, but we are trying to plan just like a beach cleanup day all up and down the coast. So we're utilizing Solve Oregon, if you've never heard of them. They help facilitate community service projects, uh, and it just requires you to attend a basic webinar if you are going to be the one primarily in charge of your individual host site. So. Uh, we'll have some more information as we get kind of specifics figured out in some of the territories that are already definitely interested. Uh, but it would be a really amazing opportunity if you have the bandwidth for it and you can get students to the coast or even within your local community uh, to work with Solve Oregon again and just do a big service day across the whole state uh, with TRIO students on National TRIO Day just doing service in their local community. So if you want any more information on that, please let me know and I can uh, connect you with those resources and, and the website at Solve, uh, who can help you on your way towards uh, creating some opportunities for students to get back to their communities. And last but not least, we are still filling out our uh, remaining empty spots within each program on the SSS McNair levels for that student advisory board. So if you have not had any students apply yet, you will probably see some emails from events at oregontrio.org. That is Marilyn, who is spearheading this process uh, as we look to fill out that board a little more and get some wonderful candidates from different programs. So um, be on the lookout for that and do your best with you and your staff to try to identify any students who would really benefit from this awesome professional development opportunity. All right, so those are my 12 things. It's definitely the longest video I've ever done. The email is gonna be big with lots of links. Uh, but I'm just trying to keep you all informed and it seems like this is a better format to do it in than send you one thing every single day and constantly be bombarding you with emails. If you have any suggestions for other kind of videos you would like to see on the website or other things you would like for me to uh, provide more insight into or elaborate on, uh, please reply to this email uh, and you can just give me that feedback and I'd be more than happy to accommodate those requests in future videos. So with that, I thank you for your time today. Uh, and I will see you again soon. Have a great Thanksgiving, everyone. Bye.